Hey everyone, my name is Rowan and today we're going to look at how to add a service bus queue trigger to our Azure functions. We're actually going to start off by creating the service bus itself. So we've got a resource group here. We're going to go to create, type in service bus and create. Now the namespace name has to be unique, so we're just going to call it SBRLQ for now. Location UK South and pricing tier, we're just going to select basic for this one. And we're going to create that. It takes about a minute to deploy and now we'll go to the resource. So it's given us a host name here, which looks like a connection string, but actually we want to go over to shared access policies and we use the root managed policy at the moment. And we want to go to primary connection string. And this is basically a combination of the connection address and the primary key together so we can give ourselves permission. Now, if we go back to the overview and we're going to click on plus Q here at the top Q name, we're going to say best input. We'll leave everything at default for now. We'll just hit create. And there we go, our queue's been created. And if we scroll down, we can see a list of our queues and if we have topics, which we'll look at in another video. Now we're going to go over to Visual Studio and we're going to create a project. So we select create a new project, go to the Azure Functions template. Our name can be queue demo and the trigger type here, which is already set for us. We want service bus queue trigger. Now we also want to set the connection string setting name. Now this isn't the connection string itself. This is just what the name is going to be. So we're going to just call it test bus for now. Our queue name is going to be test input because that's the one we created before and we'll hit create and the default code it gives us is really really basic we have our function name and our function setup like you would usually see a service bus trigger type this is the input and this is the queue name that we gave it and a connection is set to test bus and this is the setting we need to apply the connection string to so if we actually copy this and go to local.settings.json for now put in a new setting called test bus and here is where we paste in the connection string we copied earlier there we go so we'll save that and the function will automatically pick up test bus from these values and put the connection string in here for us. Now we've got the function set up, we can literally go ahead and run it straight away locally and the console will kick up to tell us it's running. And so we'll notice here, this is literally just going to take a string in. Now, even though this is running locally, it's connecting to our service bus, which is running on Azure. You can't run a service bus locally, unfortunately, but you can run the functions from anywhere you want. One thing you have to take note of is when you're using queues, if you have two functions listening for the same queue, like this queue here, one of those functions is going to get access to the item and the other one's not going to. So if you're testing locally, you want to make sure the same function isn't running in the cloud. You can have multiple functions listening for one input with topics. We'll look at that in another video. So we've got our function running and we're gonna go back to Azure. We're gonna click on the queue. We're gonna click on Service Bus Explorer. And what this is going to do is it's going to allow us to send a message to that queue. And there's a few types you can send, text, XML, or JSON. We're just going to send text because we've got a string. If we go back to Visual Studio, we'll put a breakpoint in here as well. And we'll hit send. And our breakpoint's been hit. And we'll see the value that we just sent here. So we'll stop that for now. Now, Azure didn't always have the Service Bus Explorer. They used to rely on community tools. And actually, there's a really good community tool. And I still prefer it. So we're going to have a quick look at this. I'll put a link for this in the description below. We go here and it gives you a really nice UI to use, which I really like. And it lets you see what messages are in what queues and how many there are really, really nicely. So to install this, you use uh, Chocolatey. So we can copy that. We can open up PowerShell, paste that and run. I've already got it installed, so we won't do that for now. And then it installs it to this location here. And we'll go here and we'll just run the Explorer. Now to connect to our service bus, we go file, connect, we change this drop down to a connection string and we can literally just paste the same connection string we had earlier. So we can hit OK. And here's our queue. Now it's got one message in it. We click on messages here. We can actually view all of our messages. We can actually click its purge and that will clear our queue. I'm just going to run it again. Now it's running locally. What we can do is go to our service bus explorer, right click this and click on send messages. And we're just going to type in hello and hit start. And it's sent it here again. And we've got hello. If we go back to our service bus explorer, refresh our queues. We still got the message in there. If we actually hit continue here, behind the scenes, it calls a complete function. And that tells it that we've done handling this message. So if we refresh this now, we can actually see the message is gone. Now, instead of it just logging the information, we actually want to do something with it. And we're going to have a return for this. We can change this to a string. So we'll remove that breakpoint. And let's just return a formatted message there. But instead of just returning the string, we need to tell it where the output is. And we do that with a binding. If I paste this in, it's going to tell us that return to a service bus. It's going to go send it to a queue called test output, and it's going to use the same connection test bus. So we have our test output queue, and we actually need to go and create that queue. So what we're going to do, go to queues, 
you right click on queues, hit create queue, give it the name, and we called it, I believe, test output. And we'll just hit create and leave it with the defaults it gives us. So now we've got two queues. So now we're going to run it. And now we right click and send messages. So we're actually going to send a name now and we're going to hit start to send it. We haven't put a breakpoint in, so it's going to complete straight away. So our input message queue has got one message in. We're going to refresh the queues. Actually, it's already now been accepted by the output. If we click on the messages, you now see hello row. It's picked it up and it's sent it to a new queue. And now we still have one message in our output queue. What we're going to do is click on purge. And OK, and that will get rid of all the messages. Right now, if we stop this, it's not just strings this takes in. So if we add a new class and we have to make this public and we're going to have a simple object with two values. If we change our input here to calculate and we'll call it values. We'll leave the return type as string. It's first value multiplied by second value. So if we run that, so for input, so for test input queue, we go to send messages. Instead of just text, we can send text JSON XML. You can actually pass in JSON as a text message format here. This text is absolutely tiny for some reason, uh, but we've got first value five, second value six. So we're literally just passing a JSON blob in, which is equivalent to the object we set up before. So we can hit start on there, refresh our queue again, and go to output. And look, multiplied five by six is 30. Last thing we're going to look at, I'm going to show you using two functions together. So we're going to take the output from this and we're going to look at it here just to show you how functions talk together using the service bus. So our input will go back to a string. And what we're going to do is we're going to have string formatted message from response. And then let's just change this to void. We don't want to return anything from here. In fact, we don't need an output at all. And we'll just have a really simple log of the formatted. But what I'm going to do is I'm going to put a breakpoint here. Before we run that, actually what we want to do, because the test output already has a message in, we just want to purge that as well. So now we've got nothing in our queue. We will run and we'll send a message to test input and then start on there. And here our second function has picked it up. Our formatted message is now message from response, multiplied 800, so it's got the multiplied here and now we're picking that up in the response here. So there we go. Today we've learned how to use a service bus trigger and output for an Azure function. These can run in all kinds of places, and I'll put some links in the description below on how you can upload your function app to Azure and have your functions running there. Hopefully you've enjoyed this video and you'll be able to find ways to start incorporating some of this stuff into your own code and architecture. If there's anything else you'd like to learn about Azure functions, just let me know in the comments below. Thanks very much for watching.